Hey guys, this video is loosely related to the Delphi case. It's certainly inspired by it, although we're not actually going to talk about Richard Allen or Abby and Libby or any particulars to do with that case in this video. Anyhow, the reason why I'm doing this video, though, is because lots of people still don't believe that Odinism is potentially the reason why Abby and Libby were murdered. They think it's ridiculous that Richard Allen's defence ever believed any of this, that they're crazy. Other people have said, well, Abby and Libby were white girls. Why would white supremacists wrapping up their hatred in an ancient Nordic religion? Why would they kill two white girls. And the old Norse religion or paganism in general don't do human sacrifices, so it's just nonsense. So I've got a couple of articles to share with you. And um, there's been more murders in the name of Odin. An ancient Nordic religion is inspiring white supremacist terror. Three men in Virginia wanted to start a race war. They planned to rob a jewellery store and use the money to stockpile guns, ammo and explosives. Then they would charge into churches and synagogues, slaughtering as many people as possible in the name of their religion. The man in Kansas wanted to kill as many Jewish people as possible. So he drove to two Jewish centres where he shot and killed three people, all of them Christians. He told the court that sentenced him to death that he had mistaken his victims for Jews. I wanted to kill Jews, not people, he said. Across the country, in Spokane, Washington, another man plotted to kill President Barack Obama. Okay. Prosecutors said he planned a final solution, a battle that would ultimately be won by stealing nuclear material for dirty bombs or flying hijacked airplanes into buildings. These men, and probably thousands more of them across the United States, share a common religious ideology. They're not really religious. They're bastardising the fascinating old Norse religion for their own ends. They're white supremacists who have turned to an ancient heathen religion known most commonly as Odinism. In at least six cases since 2001, professed racist Odinists have been convicting of plotting or pulling off Domestic terrorism attacks, according to a review of terrorism cases. Across the Atlantic, the man who carried out the 2011 mass murder at a summer camp in Oslo, Norway, Anders Breivik, I remember this case very well, has attracted new attention after telling a court he long had identified as an Odinist. Odinism is a perfect fit for a strain of white supremacists and neo-Nazis who think Christianity, like so many other institutions, has been corrupted by outsiders and weakened by passivity. Today's racist Odinists say it's the only pure religion for white people, not one mongrelized by the Jewish prophet Jesus. And according to Patrick Westfall, polar bears don't breed with... Black bears, okay. They see themselves as warriors, ready to reclaim America for the white race and fight against a white genocide driven by Jews that has left the greatest country on earth in tatters. Odinism is undergoing a renaissance, said Brian Levin, director of the Centre for Study of Hate and Extremism at California State University. It's now a great time for Odinism because it fits into this historical narrative about European cultural greatness and a connection between whiteness and nationality. Odinists worship, and I use that term loosely, ancient Norse gods such as Thor and Odin. They typically wear pendants of Thor's hammer around their necks and meet for rituals in the woods where they drink mead from a communal horn, read ancient poetry and occasionally slaughter animals in sacrifice to the gods. For many white supremacists, Odinism's motif of revenge and action resonate far more than the values of Christianity. Well, you know, Brad um, Holder was thrown out, got his patch taken away by Westfall because he was going to church. Oh, no, you've got to be one or the other. 
which was their religion of choice. They believe they are fighting a battle against white genocide and love thy neighbour just seems weak next to a religion that rewards warriors for fighting and dying for their noble cause. Turning the other cheek and it's all going to be okay isn't the answer for a lot of people who are turning to Odinism. Okay, said Daniel Burnside, a white supremacist Odinist from Potter County, Pennsylvania, who is raising his seven children in the religion. They're looking for the idea of, do you want to be the nail or do you want to be the hammer? Great. Odinism was spread in the US throughout the 70s and 80s by devotees, including Els Christiansen, a Danish immigrant who travelled America, setting up Odinist groups in prisons. She preached that America will never become strong again until it regains its national and, race and racial pride and that the only cure for America's spiritual sickness is Odinism. Just as the vast majority of the world's 1.6 billion Muslims or 2.2 billion Christians reject hate, only a tiny slither of adherence to heathen religions, such as Odinism, subscribe to a white supremacist worldview. Nonetheless, racist far-right domestic terrorists have accounted for a significant portion of the terrorist attacks across America in the last few decades, and experts warn that these groups are flourishing in 2017's Divided America. So this is from 2017. You don't see an Odinist church, but it's really prevalent. Downtown Centralia, Illinois, a once thriving coal mining town, lies all but abandoned. Rain pelts against the windows of shuttered discount stores and soaks a mural of Elvis and Marilyn Monroe on the wall of a long-closed JD's Music Emporium. In the dimly lit den of a ramshackle, half-painted house in town, Brandon Lashbrook raises the drinking horn towards the large banners stretched across the walls. One bears the logo of the Nazi party, black and red in the gloom. The other is a huge portrait of Adolf Hitler. Was he an Odinist as well? <laughs> Asking for a friend. I raise this horn to Wotan for wisdom, he said, using the alternate Germanic name for the god Odin. Hail, sir. Hail, sir, repeats the small group of worshippers. Lashbrook takes a swig from the horn. He is just one of at least hundreds of Odinists across America who participate in these regular rituals known as bloats. The 34-year-old primarily uses Facebook to bring together the like-minded at bloats like this one. At his house in late April, Lashbrook, who first attended Ku Klux Klan rally at the age of eight, great, great upbringing there, says Odinism really clicked for him after he came to believe that the Holocaust was a lie. A religion of and for the white race was what he had been desperately searching for for years. Races just don't really mix well. You know, polar bears and black bears don't breed. Especially if whites are the minority amongst other racial groups, if we're under attack or we're threatened. It just doesn't ever work in our favour, he said. Lashbrook has watched his town crumble around him. He scrapes together a living selling Odinist pendants and occult goods like satanic Bibles through a website and on Facebook. And he's heavily involved with the white supremacist political party, the National Socialist Movement. Lashbrook says he has found true meaning and belonging in this ancient Nordic religion. After toying with occultism and Satanism, he landed on Odinism, which offers heavenly rewards for action over passivity. Oh, you're going to go to Valhalla, are you? Okay. All right. You're going to die in battle. All right. No, you're not. We have to be prepared to fight. We need to study martial arts, weight train. We need to be prepared and unified and ready to defend ourselves and continue to tell society the truth and help more souls find their way out of hell and back to Midgard. Dear God. Lashbrook said, using an ancient term for Earth, Midgard, that way they'll unite and understand the threat that we face. It will always be honourable to die in battle. You won't be going to Valhalla, son. I promise you that. I promise you that. Despite the amount of media coverage they get, terrorist attacks in America are actually pretty rare. 
New America, a non-partisan think tank, lists a total of 154 people killed by terrorist attacks in the United States since 9-11. A 2015 poll of law enforcement officers from across the country found that US agencies consider anti-government violent extremists, not radicalised Muslims, to be the most severe threat of political violence they face. Any belief system that drives people to consider killing innocent civilians should be high on the minds of law enforcement, said Lowell Smith, a former probation officer who spent 15 years working with white supremacists across America. Just because that religion isn't mainstream doesn't mean that the next terrorist isn't out there plotting an attack in the name of an obscure god. It only takes one of these guys, Smith said. It only takes one. Praise Odin, pass the ammo. Fraser Glenn Miller needed a new way to connect with other white men. He had tried launching white supremacist magazines, but they flopped. A local chapter of the Ku Klux Klan he founded had fallen apart and he'd been ostracised from the movement for ratting out some white supremacist to get himself an easy prison sentence. Wow. Frustrated and in need of venting, Miller wrote a rambling autobiography called A White Man Speaks Out. In it, he tested a fresh appeal to the community that had shunned him. He pledged his hatred to a new god, Odin, the ancient Norse god of war and death. Odin was noble. He wasn't a racist. Odin, Odin, Odin was the battle cry of our ancestors. Their light eyes ablaze with the glare of the predator, Miller writes in his sacred... Oh, Jesus. And Valhalla does not accept Negroes. Okay, all right. There's a sign over the pearly gates which reads, Whites only, O oh glory days. Um, I don't think Valhalla has pearly gates. I don't think they do, but I've never been there, so... Not many people bought or read Miller's book, I Don't Know Why, which was self-published in 1999, but his writings took on a new meaning on April 13th, 2014. On that day, Miller packed two shotguns, a rifle, a pistol and a bottle of whiskey. Oh, don't forget the whiskey. In a paper bag with a note saying, do not drink till mission accomplished. Then he drove to two suburban Kansas Jewish centres where he shot and killed three people, including a 14-year-old boy. Just as terrorists who kill in the name of Allah often haven't visited a mosque in years, there's little evidence Miller was a practising ordinance. He didn't have much contact with anybody for months before his rampage, so he's just a, a violent nutter. That's all he was. In his 11-day trial, he ranted about everything from Christianity to Hitler without zeroing in on Odinism as his inspiration. He was all over the place, his defence lawyer said. But the numerous overt references to Odinism in Miller's autobiography speak to his attraction to the ancient religion and Miller's own words, years before his deadly attack, offer a chilling look at the toxic brew of influences building inside him. Praise Odin, pass the ammunition. Seek Heil and Heil Hitler, Miller writes in the very last line of his book. But it's not just America. Norway's worst ever mass shooting, the 2011 slaughter of 77 young men and women, white young men and women, by the way, uh, by Anders Breivik, was pledged to the Norse gods. In his trial, Breivik told the court that he named his rifle Gungnir after Odin's magical spear. His handgun was named Jolnir, for Thor's hammer, and his car, wow, his car was named Schleipnid, after Odin's eight-legged horse. Okay. I'm an Odinist. I believe in the only god, Odin, Breivik said, during a recent trial related to his treatment in prison. Breivik said he'd been an Odinist for years and had never truly believed in Christianity, a theme he expanded on in a letter to a Norwegian newspaper, there are few things in the world more pathetic than the Jesus figure and his message. And I have always despised the weakness and the internationalism that the church represents. Yeah, so, yeah, all the true gods. So it goes on. I'll leave a link to this so you can read the rest. And then recently, two men have been charged in connection with Maple Valley double homicide, in which a man and a woman's bodies were left on the side of the road covered by a blue tarp and grey blanket. The two victims, 
57-year-old Robert Leroy Frederick Riley and 34-year-old Ashley Nicole Williams were found shot to death in November in a residential area near the Rock Creek Natural Area. So the bodies were found in bushes under trash and debris. Brandon Gurner, 39, is charged with first-degree murder for Williams' killing and second-degree murder for Riley's killing. First-degree animal cruelty and unlawfully possessing a firearm. Joshua Jones is charged with two counts of felony rendering criminal assistance for allegedly loading the bodies into a vehicle. So he instructed another man, Cody Olsen, well, he's got a Scandinavian name, to shoot Riley. Then went into Riley's trailer and encountered Williams, who was simply present at the scene and repeatedly stabbed her, according to the probable cause document written by a King County Sheriff's detective. An autopsy found she had over 20 stab wounds and she was shot twice. Overkill. Olsen died in December after he was shot by Pierce County Sheriff's deputies following a DUI traffic stop. Oh, yeah. Died in battle. <laughs> died in battle for a DUI. Yeah, you, you're not in Valhalla, are you? No. When executing a search warrant, investigators found shell casings from two guns. Law enforcement also got a warrant for location history data which showed two phones associated with the suspects were in the area during the time of the murder. Olsen reportedly told a witness Gurner killed Riley when a drug deal had gone bad. In a separate incident, it also allegedly shot a horse called Lemon in the face. A witness told investigators... Gurner claimed it was a sacrifice to Odin after Olsen died, according to the probable cause statement. Yeah, he's sacrificing horses to Odin. He also shot a dog on the property before Jones helped load the bodies into a truck, according to a probable cause statement. Are these more victims of the Odinists? Or are these just violent people who are on the latest hate trend? Well, Odinism's been going on for years, but I think more people are finding it, and it's terrifying. All right, guys, let me know what you think, and I'll see you in the next video.